get the breaking news. Hold on, hold on. What, what Chris second, Haynes man? just reported that the Phoenix Suns have notified Chris Paul that he will be waived. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Again, Chris Haynes reports the Phoenix Suns have notified Chris Paul that he will be waived. Wow. He will uh, be a free agent this year. That's kind of wild. Wow. That's, that's incredible. A, that's and that only that's saves, I say only, that's $15 Because he's owed 15 the de- the contract was thirty. Mm. He's owed fifteen. Like he'll he'll get this fifteen million. Yeah. So the first thing that comes to my mind is now that's a place for Kyrie to go. Yeah, that's certainly a spot he could go if if he and uh, KD want to be on a team again. It's, well, well, that's crazy. All right. Um, but and and the funny thing is, like people are like, why would he want to do that again? By all indications, KD likes Kyrie. Yeah. <laughs> like he doesn't have any problem. We're playing on a team with Kyrie Irving. That, so I that could be the case again. But I said it to say they can't be going into a season with your point guard being campaign. Oh no, wow. they definitely can't. They gotta go Ooh. figure out some other option. I'm 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 a little surprised. I'm very surprised. I thought they were gonna do this next year. <laughs> I didn't think <laughs> yeah. they were gonna because next year they would have saved all 30. They mm. have to have a plan, right? It's Kyrie Irving. Can we? Because they don't have any trade assets. It's not to free up space to go get somebody. It's, There's no way. It's to pay Kyrie Irving, in my opinion. Would they have? So they'll have the money to like pay pay Kyrie? Because you still owe 15 to Chris Paul, right? Yeah. Like if he signs somewhere else, is they that still how that goes, Brian? 15. That, that's how that goes, right, Brian? He's still that dead. It's dead money or guarantee it's, money. Like that 15. Money. That 15 would be dead money. I don't necessarily know that they're gonna have cap space outside of him. That's 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 what I was trying yeah. to get at. Well, now, well, 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 okay, okay. Sign and trade Aiton to uh to to Dallas. There you go. That's yeah. it. That's it. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Although that's then the you're going into next deal. season with uh, yeah. Jock Landale as your pretty much only big. Yeah, that's the deal. Mm. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna trade DeAndre Ayton to Dallas for for Kyrie Irving. Mm. That's it. Kyrie Book and KD. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, imagine going back to 2018 and t- say, telling oh. somebody that uh, Luka oh. Doncic and uh, DeAndre Ayton were going to be on the same team. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's a great call, Brian. That's, go, get, uh, go get Bagley. I'm, Hell, I'm go get Bagley, Dallas. I'm sorry. Can we also point out what did you just say? KD, Kyrie, in 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 the in book in book, <laughs> and Frank F and Vogel as the head coach. There was just a report I saw this morning that Frank Vogel was like, I think Aiton can be one. Now we're assuming Aiton has not been traded, or we haven't even heard anything about it. Yeah. But he just came out with a quote saying, like, I think he can be one of the best bigs in the league. I think he is one of the best bigs in the world. Well, Frank Vogel's already on the hot seat. <laughs> Frank, Frank Vogel just firmly put himself on the hot oh, seat. Oh, and then and Bryant, this is another uh, domino. Chris Paul to L.A. Oh, dear. Oh, well. Chris Paul to the Lakers. Uh, he'd be better than uh, Russell. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, D'Angelo yeah. Russell. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Russell. Oh, oh, no. You think I'm going to go up on him? <laughs> you, you, think, you think I'm going to come on to this show and smack talk Russell Westbrook again? You crazy. <laughs> Brian, in 11 months, and he comes out here and throws a jab like that. No. Man, that's crazy. Hey, first of all, shout out to Chris Haynes. Big ups, Chris Haynes. And Charlene's Beauty Supply and no, El no. Grove for, for that breaking news. I got to um, get over there. I got to get some beer bomb. Uh, beer wow. Come Chris, back. Chris Paul uh, informed he'll be waived, uh, and I believe the deadline. <laughs> I could be wrong. I think the deadline's like twenty three days away. Mm. If mm. they waive him now, he can. He doesn't have to wait till July first, right? Or is that wrong? He'd have to wait till July first to sign any new contracts. But he'd probably no. He wouldn't even be able to talk to anybody, at least over the table. I guess technically mm. he wouldn't be waived until July first, right? So yeah. or July. 30th yeah. or whatever I, the, the date of the contract is. I guess that doing the, this early just makes it so that Phoenix knows they've got 
X days to figure out a replacement strategy. And it's probably somewhat of a fa favor to Paul. Hey, we'll let your agent go out there and start, start lining up dominoes for favor, for, favor for my ass. Spots. That's yeah. to put out there. We've got an open point guard position yeah. and LeBron ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so Kyrie, uh, here you go, buddy. We Yo, you. I'm not, maybe this is a little harsh. Phoenix Loki kind of look like a mess right now. Like, ain't no low key about it. I don't know yeah. what was going on. In ain't no low key about it. They're yeah. very much out there in the world looking like a mess. Mm. Yeah. If, uh, if KD even stumbles at all, he gets injured again. Like yeah. that window is not going to be open long. And when it shuts, it's going to shut. Like they mm -hmm. traded all their picks to get KD. Yep. So, wow. Y'all talking about Chris Paul to let Chris Paul back to the Clippers. It's going to go back to the Clippers. Well, Russ is going to be there. I don't think he is. Is he? Where do you think Russ going? going? Something like a buck 50 there. I don't know. I mean, even if Chris Paul maybe signed we're for, far for, enough for, away even, from it. Even if Chris Paul signed for a couple million, he's he's, he's still getting fifteen. Even maybe we're far enough away from it, but it really felt like who was signing Russell Wills, Russell Westbrook to ten million dollars a year. I don't know. Maybe maybe like maybe we're far enough away from it now where somebody be like, yeah, you know, I'd do it. But at the time, at the like end of the season, or it was like that's not happening. Yeah, I don't know who's going. I think he wants to stay in LA. Too. I think he does too, and I think I actually think he would sign for minimal dollars there. But uh, we'll see what their approach is. Uh, as we welcome in Bryant West, the King Show didn't plan on uh, discussing Chris Paul being waived by the Phoenix Suns, <laughs> but that's pretty much been the theme of the show. Haven't planned any of today's show. <laughs> didn't know Zion Williamson had a rough day on social wow, media, geez. but yet uh, here we are. Uh, I, well, real quick before yep. we got in, I was just asking Bryant because we didn't talk to him during the whole playoff run and anything else like that. I was just, you know, just for the vibes, man, was was that trip to the playoffs um, everything that you expected and, and more? Oh, yeah. All of last season was just the, the, the dream return to relevancy that we've wanted for 16 years now. Like, mm -hmm. if you told me a year ago, hey, the Kings are going to be the third seed and they're going to take the champs to seven games – I'd have thought you were crazy. I figured once this team broke their playoff streak, it would be by squeaking in through the play-in. But they were fantastic all last year. They have a true foundation moving forward. The front office, the coaching staff are really aligned. This team is in a in, in a dream spot that uh, I really didn't expect to come this quickly. And so now the tough part, Brian, is what's next? Like how do yeah. you how do you build upon that? And of course, you've got the, the 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 draft about three weeks away. But I'm curious your thoughts on on the roster because there's going to be some turnover on this roster, or there's certainly the possibility of a lot of turnover uh, on this roster. Uh, what do you think about some of you know some of those guys who are not talked about a lot, or, or you know free agents, and and you know we could see gone. Yeah, it's going to be a complicated spot for Monty McNair. Um, I, I think Jerry Reynolds uh, said this on the Kings Herald show last week, but it, it's always good to remember that where a team starts in their ascension into the playoffs isn't necessarily the same roster they're going to have when they get to their peak. Um, mm. So we may not see, you know, a third of the players on this team currently there when they're, you know, hopefully competing for a title in a couple of years. Um, to me, if they bring back everybody who's a you know a, a key free agent, I'm talking Harrison Barnes, I'm talking Trey Lyles, that's fine. But to me, you have to keep moving forward with the goal of finding a long-term starter next to Keegan Murray and to Monta Sabonis. Mm -hmm. um, and that could certainly be Harrison Barnes next year. But the play if the playoffs scared me of any one thing. And, and I love that playoff run for a lot of different reasons. But if there was something that really worried me, it was how much the Kings got out muscled around the boards and at that power forward spot. And, and I'm no longer convinced that Harrison Barnes is the starter on this team in the playoffs regular season. That's fine. He absolutely could be, but I really would love to see the Kings some way or another go out and add another power forward big man to this roster. Um, whether that's going out there and paying up for Nas Reed uh, or, you know, calling Toronto and seeing if the asking price for either one of their bigs is, isn't crazy high, 
I don't really know, but I do know that the first step in this process is figuring out what you're going to do with 24. And if that 24th pick is going to be shipped out, because at the end of the day, if you lined up all of the tradable assets that the Kings have this year, including, you know, sign and trade Harrison Barnes, sign and trade Trey Lyles, those two are probably uh, more valuable than the 24th pick. But unless you're getting out there and saying, yeah, you know, one of the other starters is available. I don't think you're going to have a better tradable asset right now than that 24th pick. So. You're not. And, w- and one of the things that, you know, I talk about on here and it's it w- when you talk about upgrading this team, there are moves, you know, for bench guys and, and I don't want to minimize, but say role players that you can do, but there's only one starting spot available. And you can decide whether or not that's a small forward and Keegan stays at the four or you move Keegan to three and put it, uh, uh, go get a power forward. But that's it. Like everything yep. else is solidified. And when you talk about difference makers and guys, they can change your, the trajectory of your franchise. Uh, man, I, I don't I don't know if that guy's out there. I see what everybody's talking about with OG. Um, I like Cam Johnson, you know, I, but – I don't know. Do you see a guy out there that can change the fortunes of what the Kings can be next year available through trade or free agency this year? Yeah, I think I've been saying this since uh, they took Keegan last year, but OG is, has been my target for a long time and still is. Uh, now at the end of the day, push comes to shove. Am I going to pay up what Toronto is going to ask for him? I don't know. Um reportedly at the trade deadline, they were asking for three, four first round picks. And that's probably too rich for me, even a guy who has loved OG for a long time. But if the Kings got him in here and, you know, moved Keegan Murray to the three, I think OG could be that defensive difference maker that could help take this team to the next level. Um, Not just in the regular season, but in the playoffs as well. Cam Johnson. I love Cam Johnson. I don't necessarily know that he helps with the rebounding and toughness uh, edge but he'd be a great fit, another great shooter. But, you know, it, this is a complicated moment for Monty McNair because it's not like there are a dozen names out there in free agency or in the trading block that the Kings both have cap space or tradable assets to go get. So it, it's complicated and it may not get fixed this year, but until there is a long-term four or three, you know, I, I personally think Higgins can, should rotate down to the three more permanently, but uh, I do understand the argument until that guy is brought in, that has to be your top priority. Hmm. Brian, we were talking about this a few minutes ago and I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. Cause you mentioned Toronto's asking price. How outrageous can Toronto be knowing that OG's going into the final year of his contract and yeah. whoever is signing him is, you know, you're, you're, you're taking a risk. Obviously, you know, that's, it's, 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 it's part of the game, but it also affects the asking price. You know, it's not trading a player with, you know, three years left on his deal or two years or a year and a half like that. It's like, you've got, you've got one opportunity to get this right. And I wonder if that drives down the asking price a little bit. I think the asking price might be driven down as well because it's not the trade deadline anymore and teams aren't trying to trade for him at the last moment to bolster last season's playoff hopes. Uh, The fact that his contract is ending, you know, whatever he goes for, if he gets traded, they may decide to keep him with their new coach. Who knows? But if he gets traded, I do kind of expect that that asking price will be lower than we may expect. Now, is it something that the Kings should pay? I don't know. What all it takes is one team willing to pull a Minnesota from last year and go above and beyond to to bring in this guy thinking that they're just one piece away and suddenly the asking price isn't, isn't sane anymore. So one of the things that I've asked all offseason is – are people willing to sacrifice some of their offense to get a little better on the defensive or get, uh, I won't even put a little better because that's, that's um, it's not leading the witness, but that's not a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to get better on defense by giving up some of the offense? I say, no, I'm not. I want them to continue. That's their identity. That's their strength. I said all last year, that's their superpower. I need them to stay top five on the offensive end. I don't want to give that up 
to move down to 11th offensively so you could be 17th defensively. You know, I, I, I'm I, not. Are you in the same boat where, you know, you're you're willing to give up something on the offensive end and give up that identity to improve on the defensive end? To me, the most important thing for this team to maintain is their shooting. Um, they can't go trading Kevin Herter for some shooting guard that's immediately going to be defense first. Um, the, if Harrison Barnes is going to be replaced, it needs to be somebody who is close to as good on offense as he is. Um, I would love to see more balance, but that's always because I, I've been a, a draft guy who has always, always tried to circle around defensive prospects. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be fair, I don't think that the Kings have drafted defense first in since Willie Collie Stein or something like that. Um, I, I don't oh. want to see this team sacrifice. <laughs> a defensive first guy. Wow. Yeah. Well, he was when he got picked. He was absolutely the the he, he's going to come in and, and be a one through five Carter. And then that is not who he wanted to be. Wild so, times. Yeah, wild wild times. times here in Sacramento. Um, I agree with you, Kenny. I don't want to see this team go out and, and you know, bring. I'm, I'm trying to think of somebody who who they could trade for who just be defense first that that would tank the spacing and nobody's coming to my mind i don't want to see them bring in somebody who can't play offense close to what the kings have been in this last year because like you said this team it this team's superpower was very obvious last year the the foundation is set we know the path forward incremental improvements go out and get a guy who who is close to as good on offense but is better on defense better on the glass hey that's the step forward you could take mm-hmm. well this is going to come across harsh but Uh-oh. does davion ruin the spacing because davion's a defensive guy and i mean we i mean again we saw what happened against golden state not necessarily the the it, it's more of a limitation like Davion can't go out there unless he's paired with more shooters, but it's the same thing with Fox. Like the, the limitation of this team is that Fox and Sabonis are not going to be more than average better in the clutch, but average shooters. Mm-hmm. Um, Davion's kind of the same way. It's, it's redundant offensively, but man was his defense great in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, he made me he made me take back a bunch of uh, of words over the last couple of years with that defense that defense in the playoffs because he was something special. Now at the same time, if they do go out and make a big swing, he might be the guy who gets added in to to make a deal happen. Um, mm. uh, of all the starters and and bench guys who who have that value, like I'd trade him before I trade Monk. I'd trade him before I traded uh, uh, Herder. So it, it, it's complicated, but the roster last year showed that they had the shooting around Davion. It's just, it does make it more complicated. And, and to that point, I think with this particular team, because I agree with you, the shooting is the most important thing uh, to building this roster. You can have two guys. You can't have three guys. Yeah. So when I say two, Sabonis can't really shoot. Davion can't shoot. I think you're okay. I think you're fine that way. If you add another, you only you only got room for one more guy that can't shoot the ball to keep this offense the same way it is. I think it's, it's two two maximum guys that can't shoot. Everybody else has to be able to shoot the basketball. And when you're on the court, and this is where they kind of got in trouble. And and I, I I don't think Davion falls into this. I think he shoots the ball better than maybe people give him credit for. Better than Bonte Hill gives him credit for, but. You can't ever have more than one person. Or excuse me, there there can only be one person on the court at the time. That's not that's a non-shooter in this yeah. king offense. Like, yeah, especially in this you case can't case. have two guys that can't shoot. And if you already got two guys, that, if you got two guys on the roster that are really like that, then now that just messes up your matchups because those guys can't ever really be on the same the court at the same time. Those three guys, so. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, and as you're looking at, you know, kind of these draft prospects that are in the Kings range, you can't. I don't want to see them go out there and use the 24th pick on a guy who, at least, they don't think can be a shooter in a year or two, mm-hmm. because I, I I'm of the opinion that 
I don't necessarily see uh, a tw- guy coming in at the 24th pick immediately cracking the rotation. Um, now there may be some guys who could, and, and if it happens, Hey, great for you, but it, it definitely, they can't go out there and be like, okay, we're going to draft uh, a guy who we don't think can improve his shooting over time. Mm-hmm. To me, that's the one limitation I'd have with this draft pick. Do you have a favorite at 24 yet? Uh, I have a couple. Um, one of them is is uh, C.D. Sissoko from the G League. Uh, and it, it's funny because he's probably the most questionable shooter of the guys who who I like a lot. Mm. Um, but 6'6 six, six in shoes, 223 pounds, 6'9 wingspan. Uh, go watch some Ignite tape just to go see Scoot Henderson. And I know you were talking about Leonard Miller earlier. Uh, but C.D. Sissoko just jumps off the page. That dude was 19 years old and and making guys much, much older than him just feel him on every play on both ends of the court. Uh, a fantastic defender, but also one who took a, a decent step up in his shooting this year. Got to get better because he only shot uh, 31% from three this year. But he, he's getting there, and I think he's got uh, offensive versatility in terms of playmaking, uh, an absolute bull in the china shop getting to the rim. Um, the shooting is the question mark there. But shooting's kind of a question mark for a lot of King's favorites. Like, um, uh, we, we let's talk about uh, Chris Murray because I agree with a lot of what you guys have said in uh, the last week or so. Mocking Chris to the Kings because of Keegan is lazy. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to mock Chris to the Kings, I think Damien said this earlier, do it because Chris is a good ball player and and would be good on this Kings team and not because he's Keegan's brother. Yeah, explain um, to me why it works. <laughs> like, like yeah. that's just, like not just because... What did the ringer say? Why not? Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's exactly what it said. Why not draft his brother? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, it, if there's one thing I'm learning... Works. That's why. If there's one thing I think that this is proving with mock drafts, it's, it's that once you get into the 20s, uh, writers are just like, okay, how can I pump this out really quick and just have a, a, a quick blurb on the Kings here. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want us getting sick of seeing the same old mock drafts to get in the way of saying that Chris is a good prospect mm-hmm. because it's easy to get excited for Chris considering that a lot of what he's good at is stuff that every team in the league needs more of like a six, nine combo forward. Who's a solid or good shooter, defender, dribbler, driver, rebounder, like that's an easy sell in the modern NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, he needs to prove it with his deep shot, his shooting efficiency. He he shot 33.5% from deep last year. But at the same time as I'm watching Iowa tape, I swear he got more defensive focus uh, and, and more defensive eyeballs on him than even Keegan did last year. Mm. Um, now, he's definitely not as fluid as some prospects. He's, he's pretty left hand and left side drive dominant. But you also don't see many collegiate players who are their team's leading scorer, deep shooter and rebounder while averaging just a one and a half turnovers per game. Like he's a composed basketball player who can do a lot of things well without making a lot of mistakes. Um, And I think in a role like Keegan had last year where he's the fourth or fifth option on the court, I think his shooting numbers will go up. Um, He doesn't solve every one of the Kings problems, but nobody who gets drafted at pick 24 is going to solve every problem. And, and in my opinion, every NBA TV should want as many multi-dimensional forwards as their rosters can hold. Uh, I, I disagree with the idea that you shouldn't draft Chris because they already have Keegan, Trey Lyles and Kessler Edwards. Um, I, I always want to have as much depth at the forwards as possible. And in my book, Chris is one of the more versatile uh, forwards in the Kings range. All right, Brian, let's talk about. I wonder where this is going. Our guy, <laughs> Monty Bates. I had, I said the people don't don't agree. Now, look, you could get him if your intel and your mocks, you know, say now nah, he'll be around in the second round. Sure, I'll take him in the second round. But if you're not sure, I would take a Monty Bates at 24, and not think twice about it, and look to get my, you know, solid. Uh, I don't want to say role players, but guys that I know who they are. I look to get those guys in the second round. Is all that crazy? Is all no. that crazy to say Amani at 24? I don't necessarily think that Amani at 24 is crazy. I'll give you this. You and I agree on wanting to take a big upside swing in this draft class. 
um, we may disagree on who our favorites of those upside swings would be. Mm-hmm. But if the Kings end the draft day with Imoni Bates on the roster, I'm going to be excited. Um, I may have more concerns about him than I do some other prospects we'll talk about in this range, but clearly he is a promising scorer. Uh, even last year, strong ISO score, loves attacking in the pick and roll, makes ridiculous shots look super easy. Um, he doesn't have the athleticism or explosiveness that some of these other guys that the Kings have worked out have, but none of those other guys scored 29 straight points with defenses locked in on them and only them. Mm-hmm. Um My concern for him is that he's really got to prove that he can fit on a good team again. Mm -hmm. Um, Eastern Michigan was near the bottom of NCAA Division I for total assists per game. And he had almost double the number of turnovers as he did assists. And for a guy who was the obvious best player on the court for most of their contests, like shooting 40.5% from the field and 33% from deep is worrying. And more so than any of these other, you know, upside swing prospects, he's really going to have to prove that he can handle a smaller role because it's not something he's been asked to do from high school through college. Mm-hmm. Um, the Kings or any NBA team that he goes to, they're not going to ask him to play like he did at Eastern Michigan. Is he going to thrive on an off ball, as an off-ball scorer um, as they slowly ramp up his on-ball responsibilities? Uh, he shot 38.5% off of catch-and-shoot three, so that potential is there. Um, is he going to play with more effort and awareness on defense when he's not being asked to carry an offense? I sure hope so, because he was a bad defender in the games that I watched. Uh, I hope he comes into this league and reminds us all why everybody was so excited for him a few years ago, because I think the narrative around him isn't really fair. Um, But he's got to prove it first. Great stuff from Bryant West. Bryant's going to spend some time with us over the course of the next few weeks leading into draft night. Bryant, we always appreciate you.